Hello folks, we are diving straight in with um, Scar Tissue by Red Hot Chili Peppers and we're going to be looking at the Slain Castle version. Quick run through of tones. John's clean tone is ever so slightly broken up. So that's too clean, right? And I'm going to be using a couple of effects through this on the JFX Imperium plus the Boss DS2. So this is the Microamp and the CE1 preamp. So when you dig in, you know you're there basically. If single notes sound fairly clean, but chords when you dig in, get a little bit dirtier, okay? That's the target you want to go for. Then the solo stuff is the Fuzz Factory style circuit into the DS2, okay, for these settings. And that's also going into the microamp and the C1, okay, so there's like four things going on there. That sounds like this. And you want neck position on a strat all the way. So let's crack on with the first riff. Now I'm gonna take you through the entire song, all the solos, um, and some of the fills, I mean, some of the rhythmic stuff just varies slightly throughout. We're not going to get, you know, note for note for this. But we are looking at the Slain Castle live version. So the intro goes. And then you're into the verse. John's doing there is outlining an F major to a C to a D minor. Now the key to nailing this really is muting strings that you don't want to be ringing out. John's brilliant at this, he does it in loads of songs. So it's not good enough to just play what you see tabbed, right? He's not like hybrid picking, he's strumming throughout, right? So you're going to need to be muting these strings. For the first part, the first string we need to mute is the G string. And that's me muting it with a little bit of meat off my first uh, finger there, right? But that one's still going to ring out with my little finger on the on the fifth fret on the E string, right? The, that's the A. Doesn't sound right. So what I would actually do is lightly rest your second and third fingers on the G and the B. The reason being that John isn't actually just doing you know he is for the first part that's what you hear but you want to be able to strum any pattern that you want and only have those two notes ring out because that way, you see John when he's playing it live, he's just like rocking around the place, you know, just strumming away. He can play whatever he wants there and he's not going to be playing anything other than the two notes that he wants to sound out. So that's a really key part of it, right? It'll take you a little while to get that and to find the right level of pressure because you've got to fret these two, but these two aren't fretted, which is a bit unusual. So that'll take some practice. But the first rhythmic part I want to show you is... That movement, right? The way I pick this is down, 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 up, down, up, down. And then... And here, again, when you move down to the C, first finger's muting that string there. So the only one really you need to care about is that G. The E string is now being taken care of by a little bit of meat off the back of my little finger. And then you gotta do this slide. You're sliding up your little finger one fret. Your first finger goes up two frets. Okay. Same rules apply though. Here I'm actually muting a little bit of the E string as well with the tip of my finger. So I'm muting the um, E and the D with just that one finger really. To 
make sure you get that really nice and, and clean. So you just hear those two notes that you want to ring out, okay? Then you can really loosen up your right hand. You don't have to worry too much about the exact pattern. So anything you play will sound good, right? So, that's slowly. That's staccato. Okay. Then the slide. Again. So that's when you get to here, you go down, 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 root. This is only really played in the intro, so I am laboring it a little bit, but you know, you want to play it like he does. So then we have uh, for the second and third bars. Little fill there, right? So, you know, get that in if you can. Um, first bar's the same. And most of that is the same. You're just tagging on this for the last beat. So that's a hammer on. A triplet hammer on and pull off, actually. So you are just flattening your first finger on the fifth fret. D and G, right? And then with that rhythm. Okay, then you're back into the verse. Quite tricky though, because then you're gonna sort your fingers out quite quickly to get that muting in, right? So to get that. So you wanna build that up slowly, I would play. Get that bit first and then, you know, get that shape second. See, I missed it then. Still a bit messy. And they, you've got it, right? So, second way to play this is the verse. And this is what we're going to be doing for the most part now. So you're taking a little bit of that, a little bit of that, the 16th note alternative picking stuff into the second bar now. And I would do that for, for the most part. There's another slight variation that comes up, but this will be the bulk of what you play. Again. So that's second part, because you know the first part now. Let's just slide up, play the chord again, and then alternate. Down, up, down, up, down. Another stab. There you go, I missed a bit there, but never mind. Then you're into the chorus. This is where it gets easier, and the rhythm goes. Okay. There's a little walking up note as well in the second half, which goes. And back into that again, right? So we have F, C, little passing C to D, uh, D minor. So the rhythm, down, 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 up, up, down, down, change. Again. When you change, it's whack. You know, it doesn't really sound out. It might even be like, you know, nothing played there, but I don't think so. I think John's gonna be filling that out with a little, you know, something. So I'm gonna do that. Down, 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 up. Up, down, down, down. Okay. Second time round. So you're gonna... Back 
into the verse, okay? I think that's all you need for the chorus. I would play that exactly the same way all the way through. But you can also just mix up the rhythm once you get comfortable playing it. So you can play... Play it like John would write, which is not the same way twice. Round the verse and chorus again, identical. And then you go into the chorus three times, and they do that every time before a solo, and there are three solos. So you're going to play... You're going to play that three times, okay? Let's go for the first solo. So a fuzz and a turbo distortion will get you there. And we're going to play this. Deck pick up still. So, not too difficult, you're starting on the 13th fret and hammering to the 15th, then you stay on the 15th, bend it up a little bit. So we have... Okay, that's the first part. Let me uh, play it clean. That's it. Then you've got this. 12, 14, right? This is the first beat of the next bar. I don't think there's anything too challenging there. It's just a case of remembering it. So I'll just play it slowly. We have. back into and you could do a little little riff there this is subtly different because you play that's what you're playing there right that's the same this bit And one extra note there as you slide up. A little um, triplet hammer on and pull off there. Second time. Again. Just leave that last chord ring out. Back into another chorus. This time. That again, that little passing note. No drums now though, and this changes ever so slightly. He's not arpeggiating, he's playing both notes at the same time. Oops. You got that going on, right? So it's a rhythm roughly like that. So we have root note, but then the rest of it, you're playing the two notes throughout. Down, down, up, up, down, down. That change. Not a slide this time. Just go straight there. And again, the same rhythm. Down, down, up, up, down, down. Round again this time. <laughs> so you've got a slight difference again. And that one's the same. So third bar, you're just putting an extra 16th note, basically. Chorus three times, then you're into solo number two. Let me play through that. Something like that. Let me turn the um, the gain off. So we have 15 to 17. That's my third finger there. 
Then you're going to do a 15th down to the 13th. And this rhythm is going to continue for a bit now. Right, you got that going on. So, that slowly again. Pull off. Here, I'm going to go, you can either do little finger. You could do that, or you could just do third and first, and then second and first. That's probably easier. And then you're on the uh, 15th fret, right? And again. Okay, so that again. Those are the two, two um, rhythms there. Then you get to the 20th fret. That with some gain. So again, two parts repeated basically. So you're going to do a little bend. And while that's held, you hit the 20th fret with your little finger. I'm using my third finger to bend and my little finger on the, on the E string there. And then you abandon the bend and then play. Just two pull-offs. Again. Then you have. And then you've got this last part, which comes in uh, on the three and. So... One, two, three. So you try and do that in one move, right? All of that with just one pick stroke, right? Then you've got... Then you're back into... That twice that three times. Then we're into the final solo, which goes. Messed that bit up, it basically goes into. And then we're into some kind of free time bendy stuff. So we'll stop there and wind back a bit, right? So we're going to do 20th fret to the 17th, a little pull off. Okay, so pull off, hammer on, followed by a bend. All one movement, right? And it's already bent, so then you're just gonna, you know, it's pre-bent, right? And then second bar. Same again, right? Then down to the 20th fret on the next string. That's a one and a half step bend. So that through. Then you're going to go back up to the 20th fret. So we have. to that part right so again bends pretty straightforward it's just um 20th fret but you're doing this so it's bend and then release pull off slide so that's a triplet that's three notes and then fourth note is the 17th fret, right? 
And that comes in on the two and that. Here, you're gonna to wanna to bank your first finger on the 13th fret. Because you're gonna go in the second bar, you're gonna go. You're gonna do that. So let's spend a bit of time on that, right? So we go from the. So there you've got. So you've got five of those before you go into the repeating pattern of. Do that and do that for two bars. So with the gain we have you know, that combination of the sustain on that distortion makes it quite easy for you to uh, you know even if you mess it up a bit, it's still gonna sound cool. So we have. So look at the picking pattern, right? Downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, and around. Like that, right? Okay, until you get it quick. So just do it slow and then build it up. Um, now the second bar is kind of cut short, so we have. <laughs> After that bend, you know, you've got you've got all that good stuff going on, okay? So we have So it's all right. So, so from that, then I'd use my third finger to play this next um, section of slides. And then you're into this. So that's triplets. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you just dive bomb with that, right? You know, with the with the uh, the tremolo arm. And this is all freestyle stuff now. As you end with a load of tremolo bar action. So you've got a um. <laughs> So just have fun in that last bit. Hope you enjoy this. See you again soon.